This is breaking news. It's so impactful. When I spoke with my chief counsel, based on his preliminary analysis, I said, give it to me on a scale of one to 10. It's very close to a 10 of a major concern that we have. While we're still analyzing the decision, we can say with certainty, uh, this decision has made every single one of us less safe from gun violence. The decision ignores this shocking crisis of gun violence every day, engulfing not only New York, but engulfing our entire country. The opinion claims to be based on nation historical past, but does not account for the reality of today. It ignores the present and it endangers our future. While nothing changes today, and we want to be clear on that, nothing changes today. We have been preparing for this decision and will continue to do everything possible to work with our federal, state, and local partners to protect our city. We will collaborate with other mayors, municipality leaders, and governors, and will leave no unturned stone as we seek to undo and mitigate the damage that we are witnessing today. Those efforts would include a comprehensive review with the Corporation Council, our Chief Counsel, and other legal experts to assist us in this matter. As we start to define sensitive locations when carrying a gun is banned and reviewing our application process to ensure that only those who are fully qualified can obtain a carry license. This is something that the police commissioner who's joining me today will ensure that our licensing division is aware of. We will work together to limit the risk this decision will create once it is implemented. And we cannot allow New York to become the wild, wild west. That is unacceptable. This decision is created. We will not allow our city to live in fear that everyone around us is armed and that any altercation could evolve into a shootout. We will not allow the men and women of the police department to be subject, subjected to further danger, making their already difficult jobs even more horroring. And let me be, say this again. We will do everything in our power, using every legal resource available to ensure the gains we've seen during this administration are not undone, and that New Yorkers are not put in greater, greater danger of gun violence. There is no place in the nation that this decision affects as much as New York City. There is no place in the nation that is going to be impacted based on this decision more than New York City. There's no place in the nation that the decision affects as much as New Yorkers. And we are prepared to set an example that will lead the country of how do we fight back on this decision. Today's Supreme Court decision may have opened an additional river that is going to feed the sea of gun violence in our city and in our nation. Now is the time for every elected official who cares about the safety of all Americans to come together and respond thoroughly and comprehensively to this appalling decision. Our work begins now to start saving New Yorkers and Americans. Please, Commissioner. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As the mayor said, this case has been remanded back to the lower court. So the important thing to know today is that nothing changes. If you have a premise permit, it does not automatically convert to a carry permit. If you carry a gun illegally in New York City, you will be arrested. Nothing changes today, and that's important for everyone to be aware of. When we open the universe of carry permits, it potentially brings more guns to the city of New York and to the streets of New York City, and that should concern us all. Mr. Mayor.
based on population or anything like that, determine the whole city as a sentiment area. Can talk to us just a little bit about what the process is like and give us any idea of what those risks could potentially be. We're still very much in the process of reviewing the, the opinion, um, and we obviously will, any measures that we take will be consistent with the opinion, but we are going to consider, as the mayor said, every option available, and that includes when we examine sensitive locations and figuring out how can we, in a way that will most protect New York, residents of New York City um, to the utmost extent, how can we do so in a way that is consistent with the law um, and in a way that is that is reasoned and, um, and and thoughtful in terms of the way in which we can protect uh, protect those here in the city. How can we expect policing to change once this ruling takes effect? Well, well we uh, I think the police commissioner made it clear, and this is so important because we saw this during the marijuana legalization of marijuana in the state. People automatically. They only read the headlines. They thought they can go out and just sell marijuana or whatever they want. And the police commissioner's comment that nothing has changed. Uh, if you have a target permit, that is not a carry permit. And uh, the thought that people may hear this ruling and believe they can openly carry those who are legally uh, allowed to have a permit of some sort. Uh, so we're going to send a very clear message. Number one, nothing has changed. But number two, we're going to continue our pursuit as we have removed over 3,000 illegal guns off our streets. We're going to continue to pursue that. This complicates matters. And uh, if it's implemented, and there's still levels to it, as it was mentioned, uh, but we are going to continue to pursue those who are carrying illegal firearms. Um, how do you expect the permitting process will change? And do you envision a permitting process because of this decision will now take longer and be more deliberate. So we're evaluating our permitting process, but obviously, as the mayor stated, we'll wait and see what happens when it's the lower court renders a decision. But we're taking a look at our policies, our procedures, and our licensing scheme as it stands now. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the governor floated the idea of creating a strict but shall permit regulatory scheme. Are there restrictions or requirements you'd like to see mandated that people have if the city's permitting process is indeed kiboshed? Number one, we are hoping that the governor uh, immediately calls uh, lawmakers back to Albany. Uh, we have to look at this, and we can't wait. Uh, lawmakers need to uh, get back in pursuit of how we're going to analyze this decision. And right now, uh, our, the Corporation Council uh, and uh, our Chief Council uh, is going to look at what restrictions, if any, we can put in place in a permanent process, and we're going to partner with the commissioner and her team to do so. We're still analyzing this bill to know specifically what restrictions we can put in place. Just to follow up on Liz's question, um, does this specifically this decision mean more stop and frisk? Does it mean more bag checks? Does it mean more like direct measures in terms of how protests are policed on the street this summer? Can you talk about the specific measures? So nothing has changed as it stands now. Obviously, we would look at the way we do civilian encounters when people are allowed to carry, if that came to pass. But at this time, nothing has changed. And I want to make that clear. So many of the guns that are recovered now weren't obtained legally in the first place. So how do you anticipate this decision will impact the flow of guns into New York? Because there aren't a whole lot of legal guns here to begin with. No, it's a concern. And it's alarming. Uh, just, you know, we are going from the people proving they need to carry a gun to they shall be allowed to carry a gun. You know, we just have to really think what that means in New York City. Uh, that is it's a real concern. It's a real concern. And the added burden on police officers now to be able to distinguish between the two and, you know, the concern about uh, disputes elevating uh, to gun violence. Uh, for a city like you, this, with the, we're densely populated. Uh, this decision is just not rooted in reality. And, you know, this is not a decision based on people who uh, have one shot at a time. 
This is a city and a country where people have AK-47s, assault rifles, multiple shots. Uh, I don't know what the Supreme Court was, was thinking about uh, when they made this decision. Yeah, if you could just elaborate on that a bit, uh, Mayor. I, you said at a press conference a week or two ago that this is what keeps you up at night. You said, imagine people on the, getting on the four train and everybody's carrying. Can you elaborate a little more on, on what makes this so dangerous for people here in the city? Right now, if you want a pistol, a carry permit or a target permit, there are criteria you look for. And the standard is you have to justify you need that gun and through the licensing division. Based on this ruling, if it plays out, you no longer need that justification. The mere fact you want a gun, and if there are not some serious uh, issues that we're going to uh, identify and analyze, you have the opportunity to get that gun. That can increase the number of firearms in our city at a level that has been, never has not been witnessed uh, since the Wild Wild West. Gary, you've spoken a lot about uh, improving collaboration with the Port Authority and other agencies that control you know, transit hubs coming into New York. Can you talk about that? Have you spoken to them today? Do you plan to? And what sort of measures could we expect if this ruling does eventually take effect? Like, what could we expect to see at different standards that are both bystander that, that, that is a great question. This is, this is going to cause the police commissioner and her team to do just an unbelievable shift um, from our thoughts of using technology, uh, our thoughts of collaboration with the Port Authority. Uh, if we're now saying the mere fact you want to carry a gun, you can carry a gun, uh, a lot of our planning is going to, we, we're going to have to shift into a, a totally different mindset and thinking about how do we go about and attack this problem. We will adjust. You know, I want to be clear on that. Uh, our primary role is to keep New Yorkers safe, uh, but this is going to have a major impact in some of the strategies that we are rolling out that the uh, Deputy Mayor of Public Safety has, has been looking into and what the police department has been doing. Uh, Mr. Mayor, What you want to make sure is cut off. Second question, what would you say to somebody who's watching this and says, I have to get a gun now because I'm afraid I don't know who's going to be carrying it now for my protection. Maybe they didn't carry one before, but we're going to start now. Yeah, we, uh, we, we, since we're still analyzing the legislation, the definition of a sensitive location and where we want that to be is something uh, that the Corporate Corporation Council and our lead council would determine in partnership with the New York City Police Department. So there's no clear list that I can give you now until we properly analyze uh, this, this ruling. And I say to those New Yorkers who are out there stating that, okay, let me go out now to the gun shop, let me go and get a gun, I want to share with them uh, that almost a third of the people who die from guns is due to suicides. That gun inside your home, uh, the accidental shootings of, with your children, uh, the gun left accidentally uh, unlocked up, uh, having a gun presence in your home is heightening the risk uh, of your family. And I'm saying to them, uh, we don't need a society where there's an overproliferation of guns. And I'm asking them to not go into that culture of guns being everywhere. Well, listen, if, if this ruling is implemented, the iron pipeline is going to be the Van Wick, not I-95. The guns are going to be purchased here. People are going to be empowered to believe they can carry. Uh, this has a significant impact on not only those guns that come up the pipeline, but the guns that are being sold and could be sold right here in the state of New York. Is the city able to legally police gun shows more closely as well as curtail the illegal activity in hours of gun shops? Is that, a, is that a possibility? I think as we said, as we're looking at this, uh, as we're looking at the opinion, all options are on the table. This opinion does not foreclose all gun regulation, to be clear. Um, sensitive locations is a key piece of this. Um, there are the, the application process is a key piece of this. The opinion acknowledges that. So there are areas here that we're going to study very closely. 
Uh, we've only had about an hour, so um, there's more time here that needs to be spent on this. Um, but all options are on the table, as the mayor said. Mr. Mayor, can you talk a little bit about your time as a transit cop? In the 80s, the guns were much more frequent in the system, and we had incidences like the burning goat shooting. Do you worry we're going to have more shootings like this? Yes, yes, that, that, right. And I think sometimes, Nolan, people don't remember that, you know, that Bernie Getz was carrying a firearm uh, and shot uh, at several uh, young men who were on the train. And if you were to have looked at Bernie Getz's profile, of my understanding, I don't see if there was a red flag. And so, you know, that anger can turn into violence. We see it all the time. Um, and that is what we are concerned about in New York. We're a densely populated city. Uh, millions of people use our transportation system. Uh, traffic accidents uh, can es escalate into gunfights. That's not what we want. And that's why the police department uh, has in place one of the, I think, one of the best uh, procedures to ensure who can carry a gun. And so it, it is those types of encounters that a bad moment can turn into a bad shooting and create a bad outcome. Thank you.